lessons or to sort of our lives. And I'm going to ask from all these professors that submitted for you, moving each and every one of them according to your will, Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask first from Carl Hart to receive your word, Lord, let your word fall from the good ground and take root in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.
is our uh, is our church's youth night. Amen. For youth that is both young and young at heart. Amen. Let's come out and support our youth. And also this weekend, is, uh, this Saturday as well, will be also youth outreach. Let's have a complete bless the offer. Anything that you're lacking in this life. 
like you, Lord. The Lord will fill that need. He will, you know, you, yeah, there are people walking around thinking they have a full life, thinking that they have like a full jar, you know. And the Lord, there's some people the Lord will always be able to contribute. That's what I was thinking. You have people going around thinking they got it all together and their jar is full. But there's always room for God. Hallelujah. I just thank and praise the Lord for just being here, you know, and this the Lord filling those spaces in my life, you know. You know, you have the ups, you have your downs. Pastor be telling us, you know, the Lord will make up the difference, you know. And I thank and praise the Lord, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him and everything, you know. You know how when you send off a child, you're kind of sad, you know, because they're going through things, you know, they're getting ready to leave and do things, you know. But at the same time, you know, the Lord will make up the difference. He'll fill those areas, you know, and just give you joy, you know, because God is still is going to be with them. You know, God is going to be protecting them. But I just thank and praise Lord for all of you being here. And I just thank and praise Lord because we have our minds on keeping our jars full, you know, and full of Jesus. And I just thank and praise Lord for all of you being here. Amen. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. Come on, help us out. He's been good to you. Testify. Yes. 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 Yes.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to invite your attention to John 10 and 10, Luke 22, 31. Say John, the 10th chapter, here is the 10th verse, the King James Version. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 31st verse, the King James Version. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. That, uh, that he may sift you as he. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and of his word. I want to speak on this subject. Feed me, Lord, the nourishment of our souls. The nourishment of our souls. Feed me, Lord. Feed me, Lord. The nourishment. The nourishment of our souls. Of our souls. Let's pray. Bless your people tonight in truth, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. One of the things I want to bring out tonight that God is a just God, a merciful God, and humility. We see what has happened in the world today in reference to uh, Ukraine. And uh, it's amazing when you begin to read the Word of God, the history. Amen. You see, we have border lines around each country. But historically in the Bible, when people actually attacked another country, God was a just God. That's right. That is correct. And eventually, amen, the country that attacked another country, God's going to judge that country. Yes, he will. That's history. That's right. That's right. That's that's right. Because we know who is behind, amen, these wars. Yes. Nobody but the devil. The Bible talks about rumors and rumors of wars, but God doesn't make wars. No, he doesn't. Man and the devil make wars. That's right, preacher. This text tonight is so important. Understand, Amen. The thief comes not but for to steal, well, and to kill, uh -huh. and to destroy. Yeah, to destroy. But, I come but I come that they might have life, and that might have it more abundant. The Lord wants us to have an abundant life. Oh, yes. yes. Our physical health is not that much different from our spiritual health. And we are consistent with our limit. What we consume, it affects our overall well-being. You know, it's not difficult to understand the importance of nourishment. In other words, having a balanced diet. Is, it's really when you really begin to look in the Word of God, God wants us to have a balanced diet of the Word. Some people invest in large amounts of money in improving their physical appearance yes. and ensuring that their bodies are in good health. Yes. 
But in our spiritual lives, however, we are not always so careful about tending to the nourishment of our souls. There was 12 apostles appointed by the Lord. And one of them betrayed the Lord. The enemy sent him as me. There's no doubt in my mind that Judas, amen, heard from the Lord on a daily basis. Matter of fact, the Lord picked him to be the treasurer. Right. But he got to a point, amen, as he, he was keeping the treasure, he decided that he owned the treasure. That's right. He owned his money. And that's where the devil got to him. Uh-huh. Begin to sift him as we. And Judas went to the place to betray the Lord. The one who was able to give him abundant life, more abundant. Yes, yes. But he decided, amen, to betray the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. It amazes me, amen. He was a man that walked with the Lord, yes. had a conversation with the Lord, yes. and the Lord blessed him to be the treasurer of the money. Yeah. But yet, amen, the enemy, he's a thief. Hello? Yes. He's out to destroy you. He wants to kill you. And he do anything, amen, to destroy you or kill you. I had the opportunity, amen, to minister to a, a young man over the years. He was caught up in heroin. I remember the first meeting I had with him. I sat down with him and I told him the choices. He can get off the drugs or he go to prison or die. Hello? It's amazing how the enemy, he's out to rob you, he's out to steal everything that you got. That's why it's so important when you hear the word of God to hide the word of God in your heart so the enemy doesn't come and rob you of it. In our spiritual lives, however, we're always so careful about tending the nourishment of our souls. In John 10 and 10, Jesus warned of a thief who intends to rob us of the abundance of life that God offers us. Sometimes people have a tendency to understand this as amen when we get to heaven that the Lord is going to give us abundant life. But I'm going to tell you the Lord can give you abundant life while you need it. If you continue to nourish your soul with truth. It's amazing how the Lord can bless you to actually be able to be a manager over what he has blessed you with. It's no telling what a person could actually do, amen, if they become a good steward. That's a manager over what the Lord has blessed you with. The Lord doesn't want us to be careless. When the Lord blesses you with something, amen, he, he wants you to be a good steward over that. Because the adversary will use it to sift you as wheat. When we neglect reading the word, spending time with God, and growing in our relationship with him, we are allowing the enemy to destroy us. Hello? You know what happened to Judas as he was being sent to the for betraying the Lord for 30 pieces of silver? 
No, no telling what could happen to you if you decide to turn your back on God. That's what Judas did. He got to the place and he became convicted of what he had done. And then he tried to take the 30 pieces of silver back. It was too late. You know what happened to him? <laughs> the devil killed him. You know what happened? He hung himself. It's amazing what can happen, amen, if you don't pay attention to the word of God. The visible contrast. There is a visible contrast in the scripture between the good shepherd, Jesus, and our enemy, the devil. sad to report to you that individual that I was counseling for months at a time. He died from her. But before that happened, the Lord offered him abundant life. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he chose not to follow the good shepherd. Yes. But he chose to allow the enemy to destroy him. And that can happen to any one of us in this house tonight. You can allow the enemy to come in and destroy you. Jesus brings us above life with a purpose. Meaning the devil wants to steal and kill and destroy us. There are thousands of backsliders out there today. It's amazing. When the devil gets a hold of you, look out. He's not satisfied with you being out in church. He becomes satisfied when he kills you. That's his mission. It's to totally destroy you. In the process, he began to rob you of all the truth that you ever heard. What you heard in Sunday school, what you heard in, in church services, he begins to rob you of all that truth. That's why it's so important, like it to take and fight the pills. Matter of fact, there was a study, amen, on humans in reference to vitamin D. Hello? They discovered that there were millions of people and vitamin D, D deficiencies. Hello? And so they start prescribing vitamin D. The reason was they prove they yeah. have. Let's thank the Lord for true power. Amen. The reason was they prove they have. I believe there's a way to improve your spiritual health. And that's by reading the Word of God. Not only reading the word of God, but apply it to your life. When you begin to apply it to your life, he said it. He came to give you abundant life. Abundant. If we are in Christ, the devil cannot fulfill his plan. But that doesn't mean he won't try. He will tempt to steal our joy, peace, and capitalize 
on us worrying and capitalizing on stress. That's right. That's right. I decided that I'm not going to worry about anything. Yeah, it gets you to worry and it gets stressed out. Amen. He going to take you down. Give it to the Lord. Whatever your need is, just give it to the Lord and forget about it. Will you clap your hands up to the Lord? Thank you. Give it to the Lord. When our eyes turn from Jesus and focus on our problems, we might find ourselves, hello? in a place where we become discouraged. Amen. That's true. Right. It amazes me there are different Bible characters in the Word of God where they knew what the Word of God was. Hello. Jonah. I love that story about Jonah because he was a preacher. Yes. And the enemy sifted him. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what he got upset about? He got upset about the Lord sending him down to Nineveh. And Nineveh was considered to be an enemy of his people. Right. And he wanted to straighten out the Lord. I'm going to be very honest with you. <laughs> Don't try to straighten the Lord out. But there are people that try to straighten the Lord out. And they end up not in the church. You know, but backslidden. Praise God. You know what happened to Jonah? He turned his back uh -huh. on what he should focus on. Right. Remember what I told you that God is a just and merciful and a God of humility. God could have wrote him totally off. Right. Because he was a just God and a merciful God, he did the same thing for Peter. Peter denied him. Hello? But because God was a just God and a merciful God and a God of humility, he gave him a chance. He gave him a chance. And Peter took the chance and he repented. Jonah, he took the chance after being swallowed up in a big old fish, but he took the chance to turn back to God. And he repented. Because he repented, God spoke to the fish, said, open your mouth, let my man out. When you think in terms of a well, how far does a well hang out from the shore? 10 to 15 miles. But when that big old fish let him out, he was like a missile. Took him 15 miles. And when he hit the ground, he didn't even have a parachute on. God is a just and a merciful God. Yes, he is. God of humility. Mm. And you know what the Lord did? Without a parachute, he gave him a safe landing. Yeah. And then he took off running to the earth. It's so sad in reference to Judas. Really, it's a head story. And believe it or not, this happens a lot 
in churches today, people who are responsible for the money. No. That's true. No. Yeah, you know what happens? The little devil sees an opportunity, and all of a sudden, you start acting like the money is yours. And the devil can use that. Yes. To sift you. That's what happened to Jesus. Because God is a just and a merciful God, a God of humility. Do you know that Judas probably had an opportunity to get right with God? Right. It did not have to be Judas that betrayed the Lord. It sure did. When you get in the church and you get saved and start living for God, it's so important to take the attitude, feed me, Lord. 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 Nourish my soul. Nourish my soul. Feed me, Lord. Yes, Nourish Lord. my soul Nourish my so Lord. I can be strong in the Lord. Yes. Amen. I'm going to wrap this up in a moment. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is David. At a young age, David experienced miraculous things with the Lord. He was a shepherd over the sheep. He was a bad dude. Yeah. Bear and the lion come against this old young man, and he just he took care. Yeah. But God was grooming him to defeat the lion. You see, as you live for God, God is grooming you right now. If you're being nourished by the word of God, God is grooming you to do something great. That's what happened to David. The Lord was grooming him. He groomed him to do something great. And he stepped out Amen. On the ground. Yeah. Looked at Goliath with a slingshot. And the devil had the opportunity to sift him that week. But he made up in his mind to keep his focus on Jesus. And because he made up in his mind to keep his focus on the Lord. He took that old slingshot and shot one stone. But what took the line down wasn't the stone. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And the Lord smacked him dead. And David ran up there and took that old sword he said, I ain't going to let you get up. Mm -hmm. And took that sword and cut his head off. Okay. And when the Lord saved you, there's some things you need to cut out of your life. Amen. Yeah. That's right. mm -hmm. Because if you don't cut those things out of your life, eventually it will take you. Amen. You see, David was a man after God's own heart, he loved him to death, but yet he, he failed God. But he got back on track. You know why? It goes back. He's just, he's merciful, and a God of humility. And anybody that failed God can get back to the place that God wants you to be. Would you stand? He tied up to Vira ko shala ba kuriyam ba kaya tata. Ikaya to kuriyam ba kaya. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the only one 
who can provide an abundant life full of joy and peace. Here's the key. Will you accept this as a fact? Hello? We accept this as a fact. So let the enemy of your soul rob and steal and destroy you. If you don't accept that as a fact, the enemy will eventually take you down. I don't know about you, but I, I want to run the fire. Did you say that abundant life is you able to pay bills? Mm -hmm. I said, I think so. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Think part of abundant life is helping you to ride in an automobile? Yeah. To work? To work? Clothes on your back? Yeah. Amen. Hello? You're not in the homeless shelter? Hello? Mm -hmm. You got peace? You got joy. All these things, our Lord begins to bless you when you give your heart to Him. Pretty God. He may not make you wealthy, but He sure can make you feel good about yourself. Well, Let's thank the Lord for His mercy. Hallelujah. He can make you feel good about yourself. But I refuse to hang out with the enemy. Amen. Hello? Hello? Some Christians, you know, they have the tendency to hang out with the enemy. And eventually the enemy will take you down. Why would you hang around someone that's going in the wrong direction? Young people, you got to be careful who you actually call your friend. Right. You can actually call the devil your friend. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Praise God. There are people running around here, young and old, they pull the devils. And if you nourish yourself with the word of God, God will give you discernment to leave them alone. Amen. But you can't discern them without the nourishment of the Word of God. And the nourishment of the Word of God will help you have a spirit of discernment. Praise God. Let every head bow, let every eye close. Ki kayato, moriyande ki alako, ki ka alako shinamaka. No, ki kaya to ho bahayata. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. I started out because I began to pay attention. I started out weighing 309 pounds. When I start feeding on the right thing, little by little, you know, there's a contrast here. And you got to get to the place in your know, spiritual walk to say no to some things. That's what helped me to lose over 70 something pounds. You know what I had to do? I had to say no to Waffle Burger, <laughs> no to McDonald's. Right. I would cheat every now and then with one slice of pizza, where I used to could eat a whole one. I had to say no to pizza. And it was hard for me to say no to the fried chicken. Hello? It's amazing. The 
contrast of being healthy. Yes. The contrast of being healthy spiritually. Yes. If you apply yourself in the right way and decide to say no to some things, you'll grow stronger in the Lord. I know y'all waiting to find out how much to weigh. I'm running from 309 down to 246. Amen. And the good thing about it is I'm keeping it off. Amen. Because the enemy can say, hey man, that looks pretty good over there. Hello. Praise God. And guess what? I'm still being tried. That's as you grow to the Lord. Expect being tried by the enemy. Because when you lose weight, expect to be tried by your flesh. Let every head bow and every eye close one more time. Let's talk to Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Bless his name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Except Jesus giving you abundant life that as a fact. Accept it in Jesus' name. Praise God. You're dismissed, Jesus.